Well, hello again, everyone, and we're here another occasion for another of our features on Indians in the diaspora. And this time we're all the way in Turkey. We're on the other side of the planet for this edition. And I'll start by asking my guest who's joining us via Zoom to introduce himself to the Vincentian public and those in the diaspora. Yes, well, my name is Lenroy Donald Thomas. Actually, my first name is um, Donald, but um, everyone knows me as um, Lenroy. I was born in Richland Park in St. Vincent in the Maracol Valley. And I um, went to school there in Richland Park, primary and secondary school. Then I went to Trinidad. I did some studies in Trinidad and lived in England. Um, I lived in England for some time and then I moved to Turkey. Um, so I'm very far away now <laughs> from you. I live in Istanbul, which is, um, many of you might know of the Roman Empire, the um, second city of the Romans, Constantinople. And um, a lot of history is here. Um, the new name is Istanbul. So I live in a city of about um, 16 million people. So I'm estimated to be about uh, 20 million. All right, great. And good to have you, despite the time differences that we're able to meet at this time and have this conversation. Now, you told us about where you are now and, and what's happening there. Tell me about your connection to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, maybe by starting about your parents and, and siblings and your children. Okay, so um, I think what I'll do, I'll share a screen with you shortly and um, tell you a bit more about my family connections um, because I have a family tree, a basic oh. family tree that I would share with you. But um, as you know, um, we are Indians and we came from India and um, there is a register of Indians in St. Vincent of those who came to St. Vincent from India during the period 1861 to 1880. They came on eight ships, as uh, most of you would know. And the first ship came from Madras, and the other seven came from Calcutta. Um, so the, fa the Indian families in St. Vincent, uh, most of them would have come from the north of north eastern part of India, um, from areas such as Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. Um, so I just want to share with you um, the ship list, a summary of which um, the ships um, that is on a consolidated Excel sheet. And just to point out to you some of the um, people who we have identified as family members. And then later on, I'll link that back to the family tree. So oh. if I may share with you now that screen. Um, yeah. So this is the basic information that is in the um, Register of Indians in St. Vincent. Um, and also at the National Archives in England, um, in Kew Gardens. I understand that there are some other records in um, some other libraries in London also that have the information from India um, which uh, to the, the British government. The ones that we have looked at, what I've looked at is from um, the gazettes that were sent to England from St. Vincent and they are in about four, four um, compilations. So we have um, most of this information there also. So in this list, um, you will see um, on the left side, the first column, we have the name of the ship. And I have put them together. So um, all the passengers um, is in this um, third column, the name of the passengers. And then you have the age, if they were male or female, the height. This is the information that are in the book, the name of the father. Um, interestingly, um, we have that information. Um, the number, uh, there's a number that was given to the passengers on the ship um, on which they um, went to St. Vincent. So if 300 people came on the ship, you have one to 300. Um, but the number on the left here, the registered number, this is a continuous number for all of the ships. So you have about 2,400 Indians. But for each ship here, um, you would have about three. 370, 400, depending on the amount of people. Then we have the address in India from where they came, and that's the district and the village. And um, I put in this column with um, the estate to which they were located in St. So for example, these passengers they went to, to Roma Estate up um, above the, the Rabakajara River. And there were some identifying marks there. And I put another column on the right-hand side here um, to um, identify 
the names of um, those um, Indians who are family, you know, and who, um, I, I, if I'm trying to like this, go online uh, so that each um, person can research their roots and try to link up their family um, to these Indian names. We have a, a searchable um, database of this information. So if, for example, your name is Bihari and you want to find all the occurrences, all the names, Bihari names, you type in, in a, a, a search box, that name, and then it would give you all of the possibilities, all right? So Noe, Noe Thomas is helping us out with that. He has done one, and we also had some help from the university, a university in the in New Zealand, far away. They did the records for the Fiji Indians, and they also assisted us in doing ours. Um, so I'd, I'd just like to scroll on a bit and just to point out to you some of the families that we have identified. So this is one of the interesting family here that um, many of you would have heard about. Um, on the Congress of Ripon, 1865, yeah, Kolesa and his wife, Bacha, and they came on that ship. They had a daughter, Bonhoi, and another daughter, Lukpatia, a son, Sitaram. Now, I put on, on the right-hand side out here some notes, right? So Sitaram was my great-great-grandfather, um, my, my grandmother's father, on my mother, uh, father's side. Um, Sitaram, he was three years old. You can see here, he was three years old when he came. Lokpotya, she um, married to Gopu um, in Calder. There's another Indian who came to Calder. And all of the Calder um, Indians are descendants of her. Um, so um, Sitaram became a woods, right? He took the name woods. So all of the woods are cousins to the Thomases in Calder. And then Bonhui, um, she married to Rambaluk, another passenger who came on a different ship. Um, and his generation were the Bullocks and the Bacchuses and the Roberts. Um, so you see how the connection started very, very early up. I'll just scroll along. This year is Sunka. Uh, he's the father of um, Gokul, um, called Thomas, right? And his name is further down here, Gokul, yeah, Thomas. Right, and below him on this ship, the Newcastle in 1867, is Rambaluk. So Rambaluk um, came on this ship. He was 22 years of age, and he came from a place called Banaris, which is also known as Varanasi. And um, there's a village here called um, Chanoli Kasori. We believe that these uh, we couldn't find the names on the um, map, and um, I've been researching in India. We have a lead, really. Um, I think this this place is called Chandali. It's another district to Varanasi that has been separated um, later on after this this um, this was made in the um, 19, 1990s, I think. I can't remember the exact date, but um, we we have been able to identify the area and. Um, Interestingly, I've just linked up with someone who might be able to uh, find a family over there for us. Um, so if I scroll on a bit more again, um, we have um, some of the interesting families here. Um, all right, so I, I highlighted in yellow here. We think most likely that this family highlighted in yellow here um, is on Thomas side, all right. Um, her Busia and her daughter Sigaya, I don't know how you pronounce that name, and my door. And um, there's a son, um, Shilakum. We believe that this is my great, my grandfather, um, Pat Thomas, great grandfather, Pat Thomas, all right. So his father was um, Chaman, this one here. So if you notice here, um, he was nine years old, Sherlock Holmes, his father is Shaman, and Shaman was 29, and his father is Gobu. They, were, they came from the same place in India, and this as is the children here. And the, the numbers are consecutive for the ship. So you have 17, 18, um, 19, 
2021, right? So it seems as though they, they, that, that family, um, that is a family. And the information matches uh, the story from our elders in that the family went to Lot 14 estate. That is just beyond the Dry River where the geothermal plant is um, built up there, was built. Um, so um, we believe that um, um, Sigur um, is Mary Williams, the mother of the Moors, who went to Richland Park later on after the volcanic eruption. And, um, and this other sister, we have a theory that she may have gone to St. Lucia um, during the time of the eruption, because I heard a story from um, my cousin, Denzel Bacchus, his father, my uncle Donnelly, he went to, um, in 1965, he went to St. Lucia and, and found this family member who was 100 years old. And if you check the date here, they came in 1867, she was three years old, right? So about 1865, she would have been about 100 years, no, I'm sorry, 1965, she would have been about 100 years old. So it matches, you know, so we need to to um, really research that a bit more. And um, right, so I think this is um, my father's side of the family. Thomas is from Richland Park and, and the uh, maternal side of the Mo family, the Moors from um, Richland Park also, right? This family here, um, Rampul, right? In 1880, they came on the light and his wife, Anopia, right? And also Kalu, the son, and Bob Monty. Um, they, they also had children when they, after they arrived in St. Vincent, more children, Caroline and Paul Basti, some others um, from the Acres Calder area. And um, they all, Thomas is also intermarried also into this family in Calder, right? And you also have the deans, um, Kalu is a descendant of um, Rampol and Anopia, Kalu, um, all the Dean, Dean family um, in Calder and Argyle, uh, Yambu, etc., is from this um, um, Kalu here. The sister, Bob Monty, she got married to the son of Rambolok, Babu, in Richland Park. Um, so you see how all of the family <laughs> became related again, you know. So this is some uh, interesting um, information that I found out from this. Um, this ship list. Um, I'd like to um, share now um, uh, my family tree, and I'm probably could explain to you a bit more about that. Um, and this is me asking you the question about the family connection. So go right ahead. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> right, so that's my um, name there, my mother and father, um, Alban Charles Thomas, and my mother, Eileen Thomas. Um, uh, his father, my father's father, was Char Charles Charlie Thomas and mother Edith Woods. And um, their parents were, um, Charlie Thomas' parents was um, James P. Thomas. That's that guy who we just identified as Shilukum, who came at nine years old, and Chaman and Hawassu. We believe that those are his um, parents. His wife, Eleanor, I still have to do some research on this one. I'm not sure, but um, I'm in consultation with um, Rudy Bailey um, because she came from George Chung, that side of the family up there. And I think she's related to Henry Bailey, um, Rudy's grandfather. And um, so we need to identify that one. But all of the others have been, have been able to um, identify them. So we have um, here Sitaram, with father of um, my grandmother, um, Edith Woods, and all of the Woods uh, family came from him in the Indian Woods in St. Vincent, and these are his parents here. Then we have um, Charlotte um, Ranjani, who is um, his wife, and she was the daughter of Aku. I, I, I would just go back a bit, if you don't mind, and go to a standard... Um, Right, it's, it's a bit uh, <laughs> more complex, but um, it it shows the the um the yes. more detail, right? Yes. yes. So if I if I will if I we have time, I could just go through some of this. So if I click on this here, uh, for example, these are my siblings here. Okay. 
right? So I, my siblings, uh, um, Stephanie, uh, she passed away some time ago, Maudlin Engler and Lucia Berlin Candle, here in St. Vincent, and it's in Jamaica, I'm in Turkey, Janice and uh, Conrad in America, Hanif is in St. Vincent. I have um, three children in, um, well, my son is in Germany, he works there, and my uh, daughter, Naila, she's a solicitor, my other daughter, Rina, um, she's a cognitive therapist, and my youngest daughter, she's in Turkey, yeah, she's um, in grade eight, yeah. Okay, so um, if I if I go a bit now to Charlie Thomas, um, who's my grandfather, my father's side, um, these are the children of Charlie Thomas. Um, some of you may know some of them, Hillary, Ken, Glenn, Reggie, Mildrina, she was married to Donnelly Bacchus, as Denzel's. So we um, for Denzel, we are cousins on my mother's side and my father's side. <laughs> Rita Thomas, um, she was married to uh, Woods, Walby Woods, Lester Thomas. She lived in um, Fort Lauderdale. Um, he has children, he passed away. Uh, Claudine um, Thomas, she was married to Lawrence King. You might have known him, uh, who lived in uh, Mongrenan. Um, they had a truck uh, bus up there, and um, he moved to Florida some years ago. He passed away there. Eileen McDowell, she was married to uh, Chieftain McDowell. And Henry Thomas, he, he didn't get married. He lived in um, England. Watch well, Thomas lived in Trinidad. His family is in Trinidad. So that's my father's side. On my um, mother's side, um, yeah, right. Her father was Joseph um, Bacchus and Alice Moore. And um, these are the children for Till Bacchus, the first um, son. By the way, he would be 100 years old on the 5th of December, this December, next month. I think some of the children are going over to celebrate. And then you have Tanali Bacchus, my mother Eileen um, Bacchus, well, Thomas, she became Thomas. Teresa Jack, she, um, Jack's Enterprises um, in St. Vincent, Edwin Bacchus in America, he passed in America. Iris, um, she lives in Canada, in Toronto. She's about 90 years old now. Um, Eli, he's in St. Vincent. He's about 90 or so years old too. Um, Doris, um, back, she was married to Williams, sportsman. I don't know if you heard of the boss sportsman yes. from Russian Park, right? That's his wife, um, my auntie Doris. David Bacchus, he was a mechanic. He lived um, near to the Riverside in Russian Park. And we moved to Florida. He passed away about a year ago. Ulrich Bacchus, he is um, in Canada. Um, Leah, she passed away also in Florida. Uh, Lydia Bacchus, she's in, um, I think she's in New York. Um, her husband is Val Joseph. And Calvin Bacchus, he um, was in Canada and passed away since recently. Miriam, I never got to know her because she died when she was young. I only heard about her. So, um, so it's a big family. Um, I don't know if I should go through all the details of these, you know. Um, we might then... have to save some of that for when, when we fully unveil some of these features. Yes, yes. So we, we um, in regards to this, this is an idea of um, how it could be for um, the average person, St. Vincent. We have um, developed this um, this site, like Ancestry.com or like MyHeritage.com. And we want this really to be owned by the... Indians of St. Vincent by the foundation. We want to turn this over to the foundation. Um, Noe, Noe, is, Noe Thomas is doing some work on this and also Sean has done some of the um, family trees. So there's a lot of information um, that we could share here. So uh, we've been, I've been able to basically sh um, trace, except for one, all of my, um, my great, great grandparents to India. So the next search now is in India to find them in India. Okay. Well, quite an extensive um, family tree you have there, and I'm sure that uh, this would be of great interest. I'm certainly fascinated by the wealth of information that you've been able to discover and the work that you're doing in, in uncovering all of our connections um, as much as you're um, almost half of a day or more than half of a day away um, that <laughs> you're in touch with, with the family connections here in St. Vincent. And uh, I just want to, to switch back to that because I know as much as you're living in Turkey, you spent most of your life in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and there must be some things 
that you recall, you know, growing up in in in, in these this environment where, where exactly did you reside and what was childhood like schooling you know your younger part of your lifetime yeah well i grew up in richland park um next to the that big building in richland park the seventh day adventist church and um i remember growing up as a little boy we had a dog called bobby I mean, we, the other interviews haven't spoken about the pets but um my sister i think burial um and, uh, it was her, her um, dog, um, Bobby. He was very um, hairy skin, a white dog with box, black spots. And um, he he um, lived to be 14 years old. In dog years, apparently it's about 90 years. And we had another dog called Rover. And um, <laughs> Rover, Rover um, he pied away after Bobby died and died also. Then we had Pat Bone. This dog used to run to the boundary. We lived next to the school, and the school children used to come over sometime into the garden. We have vegetables. And he used to run um, to the boundary. He never would go over the boundary. <laughs> you know? um, so he's a, a, quite a, a funny dog. And then we had Blackman, a very um, nice dog. He used to live under the um, copper. Our house was um, one of those um, old time shingled house. And um, the copper was there. So I think that house had some significance in the older time, between that the copper, the big copper, about um, a meter and a half in diameter, was there. Apparently, my father uh, used to um, make soap, use it to make soap, boil the, boil the coconut and uh, coconut oil, and um, they would buy caustic soda. I heard of these stories. They, that, that was probably before... Um, I was born or when I was very young, um, but I haven't seen it. Um, I, heard, I heard about that. About that. What I could remember is that we had a shop and um, he used to be sewing, making hats all of the time. And my mother also in that shop. And we also sell groceries and um, more and bread and cheese and pallet to the school children around because we, our house is located next to the schools in Richland, the Seventh-day Adventist School and the um, government school. So I grew up really um, in that kind of setting in the village. Um, so the Indians in Richland Park, other than being farmers, they were also industrious. Um, you know, they planted bananas in my time. Um, before that, there were other crops. Um, but my father used to make caps. He learned this from his mother, um, Edith Thomas. I think she was the first one who started the cap making business. Apparently, she bought a, a cap, cut it down to get the patterns, and then sat the, that um, process, that industry. And then she went to Trinidad and um, expanded down there. And then other family members continued. Then we had um, my um, aunt um, Teresa. They made, um, they used to make uniforms, um, children uniforms, and that developed into a, a bigger business, as you know, Jackson Enterprises. We had Morris Kidd um, next door, who used to make um, bags, letterette bags and wallets and those kind of things, you know. Um, and quite a few of the Indians owned shops, um, the uh, grocery shops in Richard Bay, they were mostly owned by the Indians. Uh, I think generally in St. Vincent, you know, quite of them. And a few of them got into shop, shop business, um, um, retailing, and also into transportation. My grandmother had a bus, um, Reliance, I heard about it. I can't remember it, but um, I used to carry passengers from Richmond back to St. Vincent. So she, so I'm um, Kingstown. Um, she also used to buy nutmegs and export, you know. Yeah. Um, so, so the Indians, um, uh, you know, make use of the farm and other um, trades and so on. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting that you know that because all of those areas that you noted, they're still members of that family line that are doing it. You know, there's mm -hmm. there, there's some deans involved in in soap making still. Um, Jazzy is, of course, who's, right. who's who's continued along that line. They do also right. stood into trucking and transportation in another form. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned you mentioned the, the, the Jacks family who is continuing that line of business as well. Mm -hmm. Um, we think of people like Summer Ware who continues to do right. um mm -hmm. manufacturing of clothing, etc. And the farming is still very prevalent in Richland Park and surrounding areas. So what right. we've seen is is the is the generations have continued to follow along the footsteps of their mm -hmm. their very industrious forefathers. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And although, mm-hmm. yes, go ahead. Yeah, I was saying, um, well, as you know, the banana industry declined um, and um, overseas became more attractive economically. Um, a lot of the families moved out, especially in the 1980s. They, they, they started to move from the 1950s, 60s to England. But in the 1970s and 80s, quite a lot of them went to um, America and Canada. Um, because there were better opportunities over there for not only jobs, but also educationally, um, tertiary education. So um, whereas in St. Louis at that time, it was difficult to um, get into university. They found it easier to get into university when they go abroad. Yeah, so. And I understand some some even went to Aruba, Curacao, seeking opportunity. Well, actually connected to that, uh, uh, I have relatives who ended up in, in, in Curacao, for example, and right. you know, settled there, and that's right. a whole different branch of the family. So I, I heard about some of the other family members who lived in places like Aruba and Curacao, and some others from Calder, Richland Park, and all of these areas who went there as well. Right, there's one family down there, um, Donald um, Mo. That's my uh, grandmother's, my maternal grandmother's brother. Uh, brother, yeah. Um, he went to um to uh, Aruba and his family is down there. Apparently they had a restaurant and, and run a business. And uh, we've been able to link up um, with those families. Um, since we started the online sites, the Facebook pages and so on, we've been able to link up with a lot of families over there. But yes, um, so what if family went to Aruba in the early years, 1920s, 1930s, to Aruba, Lloyd Backers, and several, several others from Colorado also, and different places, and came back to Simmons. So some of them went on to um, America um, from Aruba. Um, so this family has spread out all over um, the globe now, yes. Yes, and, and, and wherever we go, we'll find somebody of Indian descent connected to us in some way, because right. as you're in Turkey, they're, they're, they're those of Indian descent who ended up in you know, in the Far East, maybe we don't, we don't, we're not in touch with them, but they're there. And yeah. you mentioned earlier the connections with possibly some some connections going way back with Fiji and the Pacific Islands, and that's right. that's something that just you know hit home that there's a possibility that we have you know several generations deep cousins who right. who are in residing Fiji in Fiji, and Australia. Actually, in the book, um, I wrote and uh, summarized in your interviews, um, I mentioned a family, um, Mr. Prasad, um, who's um ancestor um his name is on the uh, ship list Luchmin, Luchmin, and he was able to trace back to St Vincent his family who went to um, Fiji and then on to Australia they live in Australia now you know mm-hmm. so we have family we, we, we I'm not sure if you have related to them but um they would have, have had connection in St Vincent apparently they are related to the Phillips I'm in St. Vincent, but I'm not sure about the Phillips line. In okay. St. Vincent. I, I haven't so, uh, heard about the Phillips line, so I'm not too familiar yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah. I know that people with the Phillips surname, but they, they um, on appearance, they're not of Indian descent. Um, at right, least those who are not right. carrying that surname today. So maybe right. so, some of those people have moved on to different places. Right, and it could have been mixed also. Yes. Correct, correct. Yeah. Well, it's been quite an interesting journey talking about all of the family connections, but um, one thing you didn't tell us about, though, is, is some of those times that you, you cherished growing up. I mean, you mentioned about the dogs that you had and, and, and that, but there must have been some things that stood out as a child to you. And then after that, some of the things that you you remember that, you know, hit home to you was as moments when it was really difficult for you and the family. Yeah. Um, so the interesting part for me was uh, with my friends um, going to the river and fishing. You know, um, I learned to make a, a fish gun when I was very, that, uh, that's a very um, positive, <laughs> happy memory um, I have going to the river and fishing with um, the Joseph um, boys in Richmond Park. Um, we were playing games, you know, um, when we were younger um, in the village. Uh, there are so many things to, 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 to venture, you know, that I can't um, put all of them together. Um, so there are happy memories. Also, even walking, you know, when I was very young, um, we used to go into the land. We had several plots of land um, where we planted bananas. We had um, a plot in Maroon Hill, and we had one in um, Cotton Ground and a place we call Overground. 
<laughs> another place. Um, I have a, a memory of um, carrying bananas um, or carrying this, this sponge. At one time, um, we used to wrap the banana bunches in sponge, about half a half an inch thick. Um, and that was that was after if, before that um, they used to wrap them in um, a kind of paper, um, brown paper with tissue inside. Um, they, they used to wrap the bananas in that, and later on invented came up with this idea of sponge, um, half inch thick sponge. And so you used to carry those to the field, and then put, put the banana on the sponge and roll it in, into the sponge. And then they carried that and they head to the station. And then after that, now you have to carry back the sponge at home. And I remember one day it was raining and all of the sponge was wet and all this water was running down on me. <laughs> so those are some of the memories. Later on, um, they developed um, the, the system where they cut off the hands and boxing the bananas. Yeah. So one of my first jobs was working at the um, banana station in Hopewell, where I put um, bananas into the tank after the grade of the bananas. And I, I had a, a little side job there when I was younger. <laughs> but my mm -hmm. uncle, um, Donnelly, and um, Vortil Backers, and the Lewis's, uh, Kenneth and Alfonso Lewis, they were the first one who built um, a boxing plant in um, Richland Park, um, in um, Kelly Park. Mm -hmm. um, well, right. in St. Vincent, they were the first to do that, and then other um, places um, developed their boxing plants. Mm -hmm. And I used to also help in um, making boxes, so you okay. can't put boxes. So you, you've been it's quite busy since you were a youngster. Yeah, since I was young. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a lot of good memories and bad memories. <laughs> well, some along the way. And and we know the connection there because you mentioned your uncle, Donnelly Backus, who happens to be the, the father of our president of the foundation, uh, Junior Backus, and Junior. also Denzel, who's a member of the executive mm -hmm. And and you yeah. see the, all the connections. We all related to some some form of passion. Um, and and sometimes when you look at the trees, you realize how closely related we are. Mm -hmm. In in terms of certain things, you'll change. You you'll change if you had the opportunity to do so. You live most of your life in St. Vincent. You chose to move to Turkey mm -hmm. at some point in time, and that was a life changing mm -hmm. decision. Different culture, different different everything, pretty much. Uh, is there anything you'll change about that? Yeah, well, I, I um, thought about the question because I know you asked a question to all of the other interviewers, you know, and then um, I'm wondering, I, you know, in life, there, there are different pathways and there are lots of roads and um, you end up doing the best um, considering the situation, you know, so there, there might have been things that um, you didn't want to work up this way, but in the end, you find a solution to it. And then, um, for example, in my personal life, for example, I got divorced, unfortunately. But I'm thinking now, my daughter here, I have a daughter now. If I didn't get <laughs> um, divorced, I would not have um, had her. And I'm looking back now, can I live without, you know, can I say that as a regret? No. You know, it's a good thing that happened, you know. Um, so there are different pathways in life and um, you go through life and you find solutions to different issues that develop over the over the, um, the period of your life, you know, and um, you you move on, yeah. Yes. Well, that's been quite a quite a journey for you, I see. Mm. As we get ready to wrap up, uh, I know you're familiar with the organization, so no need for me to ask you that because you're mm. quite familiar with what we do and you're very yeah. much part and parcel of, of what the organization does. And again, kudos on the book, uh, the book that you released um, last, mm. well, during the past year. And yeah. um, which has been getting some attention locally, regionally, and internationally as well. Uh, in terms of your suggestions to the foundation, uh, how can we, you know, make it more inviting for others to be a part of of what is happening in the foundation, to 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 be a part of the whole movement, to finding out about your connections? Yeah, well, one of the things I noted in the book, um, and I don't think a lot of people picked it up, but it's a positive thing. Um, that came out and he asked a question about um, the good times of the you know participants. All of them mentioned um, games. They used to play hopscotch, they used to play um, different um, police and thief, whatever, <laughs> um, in the villages and things like that. I think um, the foundation can probably develop this idea um, to bring back the old time um, memories, like probably, um, plan 
a month, uh, a, a month end, or a weekend to go to a village in um, say Rosebank, and you do those games on there with the children and interact and you know get involved, get them involved. Then you go to you can go to Georgetown and do something similar. That's a, that's a good idea to you know get people involved. You know, in regards to involving those overseas, as you know, there are only about um, maybe twelve hundred Indians. Well, who, who classify themselves as Indians? Um, uh, I guess they have mothers and fathers who are Indians. Uh, we have about maybe twenty percent who have mixed. Indians in St. Vincent. But most of the Indians have gone overseas to um, different places, as you know, in the diaspora. So maybe the foundation can um, reach out um, a bit more and maybe include um, personnel from different locations. So th that was one of the original ideas when we started out at first, you know, that first meeting we had at um, Indian Bay at our city's house. We, we talked about um, having uh, people from different locations. Um, so maybe someone in New York, there's quite a big um, incension falling in New York. There's one in Orlando, there may be one in London. And to have these as maybe executive member or some form of um, membership to the executive committee, um, you, you know, because they can bring different talent and different um, ideas to the foundation. And they may be able to move things, you know, that um, we might not get to move in St. Vincent, you know. Um, so I think that that's one of the ideas. Also, I, I would am um, very passionate about um, having all of the historical information uh, disseminated to anyone who wants to um, to get it. So I, I would um, be very happy if all our records could go online. We are we are working on the Noe Thomas and is working a lot um, to try to get these records um, online and available to anyone who wants to research their roots. So I'd be very happy if you could get those, you know, that information <laughs> approved to go online. Well, hopefully that's soon so that we can, all of that you shared today, the, the, the a very detailed list of all of the, the, the families who came here via the various ships. Um, and I'm sure those who are viewing this would be uh, eagerly anticipating the point that they can go and do a search and, and pull up their family connections and see who you know who they're connected to and uh, that will be quite quite an interesting uh, feature when it's when it's eventually unveiled all being well with your um, permissions etc yeah and it's a lot of work you know so we have to give um you know um i don't know if the foundation probably can you know <laughs> get financing for this kind of thing if really need financing that's a real problem if you have for example someone who can work full-time on this it's a full-time job to get that thing up and running yeah it it's is. a lot of work and noise noise doing some of it and uh, sean has been doing some you know uh, but uh, the, this time constraint with their jobs and so on so it will be good to make this available to the public yes mm -hmm. As we get ready to wrap up, anything you'd like to add um, to our discussion today? Um, no, I think we have covered quite a lot. Yeah, I want to thank you very much for doing this. You have been doing a great job. Um, thank you. Um, over the years, um, since you started with the first eight interviews, you have been doing an excellent job. So kudos to you also. Thank you very much for what you have been doing. Yes. And thank you. And, and hoping with your permission that we can share this to the rest of the yes, Vincentian definitely. of Indian descent at home and abroad. Definitely, you can share. Yes. Yes. And thanks for all your your work in contributing to the foundation and in in your wealth of information and agreeing mm -hmm. most of all to do this interview with us today. Thank you. Thank and you. do take care. Good night to you. I know that you <laughs> it's it's well <laughs> late in the night in Turkey now, so thank you very yeah, much. It's, it's afternoon thank here. You very much. Afternoon here, but night over there. So yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Thanks again. All right. Have a good evening. Yes. You too. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye.